In this video, we'd like to share with you the ways you can use Canvas for assessment, both in your program, and then later on we'll talk about how this fits into your course assessments, as well as being able to collect information into the program. First, I want to give you an overview of how Kansas State University, we look at the assessment process. Canvas itself, it has several layers with inside it, which most people don't see. There is a university institutional level assessment in Canvas. There also is a college level. What we're gonna talk about today is the program level and then the course level, and that's what most faculty see within, when they go into Canvas. On the program level, if we're able to put the outcomes at that particular level, then faculty inside of their courses can pull those outcomes into their courses themselves and align these outcomes so then the assessments that happen within coursework can identify student achievement per program level outcomes. We'd like to show you this process within Canvas now, what it looks like and how it is put together. So this is the very first step in setting up Canvas uh, to facilitate program assessment, and that is setting up the program level outcomes. So I'm logging in, into Canvas now um, at the program level for uh, mechanical uh, and nuclear engineering. They were one of the first programs who um, incorporated this process into their uh, own assessment process. Um, so at the program level, they have uh, outcomes A through K, and then underneath that, they have the individual criteria that they've set up to assess uh, those more general outcomes. So they have B1 through B4 for this one, um, which has to do with experimentation. And you'll notice uh, in each of these criteria, they have a four point scale uh, going from exemplary to adequate, inadequate to poor. And then they have the specific language that's used to describe what that achievement level means for that criteria. This is really helpful uh, in guiding faculty and um, uh, allowing for reliability in the assessment measure. Now, one thing I wanna to bring to your attention are the definitions of which we use for outcomes. If you notice in the outcome category, these would be the outcomes that we, we normally consider within our, our particular areas as outcomes. But you notice in Canvas, these outcomes are folders. And inside of those folders are the criteria which we actually assess. We have always thought of these outcomes not as only one thing, but are collections of multiple small bits of criteria that all make up that particular outcome. In Canvas, the outcomes are in the, in the furthest, lowest level that you would assess. So the outcomes are what we normally would call criteria. And then on this particular program level, the, what we would call outcomes are actually the folders in which the criteria or Canvas named outcomes in which they are are placed. So for example, um, in addition to this one, which is about experimentation, written communication. Written communication isn't just one thing. It's made up of a lot of things that students demonstrate depending on the program. So written communication uh, would probably be a folder, even though that would be the program outcome. And then underneath that, there would be individual criteria that would actually be assessed, like the use of citations or uh, word choice or uh, paper structure or um, main ideas and content or what have you. Um, so that's how Canvas can be set up to make things both accessible uh, at that lowest level, criteria level, and also build up into the overall more uh, general outcome level. So the first thing we would want programs to do is look at their outcomes and think of the criteria that they're assessing. Then we will give access into the administrative aspects, aspects of Canvas so that those in charge of the assessment processes can be able to create this folder mechanism and the particular criteria that are assessed within Canvas, and it's those criteria that are pulled down later on into the courses. Once the, uh, the programs have the assessments pulled into their courses, then all the faculty would be doing is assessing the coursework that happens within the program. This, the scores that are aligned with particular outcomes then automatically get 
uh, sent to the, pro the program level and can be collected automatically and then reported through a visualization process, which we, the, the program is called Power BI. We're going to explain that in another video. So our overall uh, alignment, which it goes, is all, each of the courses have their own particular outcomes and assignments in which the, the outcomes are assessed across their program. We also have the program learning outcomes in which all of these courses feed into. What the program would do is identify which of those course assessments directly demonstrate the student's achievement for those particular outcomes particularly upon program completion or the credentialing of the, the particular program diploma. Those would become the particular outcomes which are assessed. And the way this unifies this together between all the different outcomes is the program to identify what is the particular level that meets expectations. And you can call that proficient, meets expectations, hits standard, whatever you would like to call. Uh, but to decide what is that, what is the rigor of the program. We also want programs to look at the lowest level. What is the lowest level ex acceptable for your programmatic rigor? In between meeting program expectations and not meeting expectations, there's the level which they meet the minimum expectations, but do not fully meet the program rigor expe uh, expectations of being proficient. Then we do ask programs if they would consider looking at the level above meeting program expectations, because sometimes there are some students that go far beyond the expectations or the rigor of our program. It's good to be able to identify at that particular level as well. This is not A, B, C, D, but these are the expectations of your program. And if the assessment measures identify these four particular areas that per each outcome, then you're able to pull student achievement from particular assessments. So in the next video, we're going to show you how to use Canvas to be able to put the outcomes into courses, align with particular assignments, so then later on we'd be able to have this automatic data collection from coursework.